the Stamps family and the Queen family to celebrate Anthony Nicole's wedding. As you know, Anthony, my youngest son, not baby boy, but youngest son, <laughs> <laughs> asked Nicole to be his wife and he said yes. Nicole, you couldn't be a better fit in Anthony's life if I chose you myself. You are kind, loving, talented, and beautiful. Seeing you and Anthony together warms my heart. I love the way you both care for each other. Never forget why you love it. Nicole, we love you, and we will always be here for you through good times and bad. I love you. I, I believe you and Anthony. You were sent to Anthony for the I love you, sweetheart. Welcome to our huge, wonderful family. Raise your hand right now. Please raise your glass to this beautiful couple. Congratulations. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. No chocolate milk left. <laughs> it's a video. <laughs> um, very specific date, and I know that date because it's Molly's birthday, Molly's my wife, and um, it's also our anniversary. So that very special event, and um, what better way to have two people in love celebrate their anniversary and Molly's birthday than have a third person join us? So <laughs> that, that happened to be the day that uh, Anthony decided to move out to New York City and he stayed with us. Um, now what was really interesting about that is uh, we always make some, some type of dinner and I love to make uh, uh, a recipe from uh, Mimo's. If you don't know Mimo, you know that name. My mom. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I always make um, chicken cafeteria call it kitchen chicatory. <laughs> um, but at that time, Anthony was a vegetarian, so there's a special request. We made two giant pots. One was portobello mushroom, one was chicken. Um, later, he came in and said, you know what, I'm not a vegetarian anymore. <laughs> it, was, it only took me five hours, so <laughs> But um, when, when Anthony came in, um, he, had, he was fresh off the bus. I had one bag of clothes and about four bags of craft books. <laughs> um, but there is a, uh, and he had a signature at that time, it was like he had one dreadlock, <laughs> a couple of pieces. Can we just snip that guy right off? <laughs> Uh, 
my, my mom always likes to quote John Lennon that um, and life is what happens in the busy making good plans. And so
for Kermit. Please stand. It's best that we recognize the wonder of this moment. Nicole Familetti and Anthony McHugh, two people from opposite sides of the country, a country of 325 million people, meet in a city of 8 million people. <laughs> <laughs> they meet in Brooklyn and find an instant connection, a magnetic pull so strong that they're simply bound to each other in that moment. The thunderbolt, as Italians call it. Il copo di fomine. <laughs> as the author says, when love strikes someone like lightning, so powerful and intense, it can't be denied. It's beautiful and it's messy. It turns people inside out. There's no going back from it. Once the thunderbolt hits, your life is irrevocably changed. And so we are here witnesses to the miracle of Anthony and Nicole, two kindred souls possessed of an inherent kindness and goodness, Two people unique and distinct who are simply and beautifully connected in such a wondrous way that they could not have failed to meet each other, to find each other, and to bring us all together to share their joy. Locks that fit our keys and keys to fit our locks. When we feel safe enough to open the locks, our truest selves step out and we can be completely and honestly who we are. We can be loved for who we are and not for who we're pretending to be. Each unveils the best part of the other. The sidewalk. It is just after sundown as we wander along beside the curb and parked cars to a little spot we both know and miss if we stay away for too long. Nearby wild onions sprout higher than the grass. And I think of how I cut my fruit into slices. Moment in time. The words you share and the promises you make today must be renewed and reaffirmed tomorrow and for all tomorrows to come. This commitment is made in the love you've built, kept in the faith you have in one another, lived in hope for your future together and made new every day of your life for all eternity. Anthony and Nicole, having heard that it is your intention to be married to each other, I now ask you to declare your wedding vows. Please hold hands, dear Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, do you take Nicole to be your wife, to share your life with hers, and to build your dreams together? Do you vow to honor her, 
comfort her, keep her in sickness and in health? Do you promise to love her, respect her, support her, and be loyal to her through all of life's trials and triumphs for as long as you both shall live? I do. Nicole, do you take Anthony to be your husband, to share your life with his and build your dreams together? Do you vow to honor him, comfort him, keep him in sickness and in health? Do you promise to love him, respect him, support him, and be loyal to him through all of life's trials and triumphs for as long as you both shall live? I do. We come now to the words Nicole and Anthony want to share with each other. The words that will take them across the threshold from two individuals, separate and distinct, a new union, together, a marriage. A marriage is made with the deepest sense of inclusion of one another. It is entered into with the desire and hope of a life-lasting love and an eternal bond to each other. I now invite Nicole to share the vows she has written for Anthony. Anthony, when I met you, I knew you were different. You have a sweetness, intelligence, and a tenderness about you that I've never encountered. You make me want to be a better person. You'll never truly know the depth of my love for you, the extent of my trust in you, and the vastness of my faith in you. Today I choose you as my partner in life. I vow to tell you every day how much I love you and remain by your side all the days of our lives. I'll always be your biggest fan. I choose you forever. Today I promise you my unwavering loyalty, my unconditional love, and to always be by your side. I love you. <laughs> and I now invite Anthony to share the vows he has written for Nicole. <clears throat> Nicole. I don't think I could have made you up to be as perfect as you are. How every little piece of you fits with me. How you make me happier and stronger and brighter and more in tune with the man I want to be every single day that we're together. As I think about you now and all that I've learned about you and all that I will get to see you become, it makes me feel just stupidly lucky to be a part of your life. <laughs> and all the millions of ways you have been there for me and encouraged me go so far beyond what any one man deserves. I think of all the important moments in my life and how each one brought me closer to you. I consider all that we've done together and the moments that seem like they happened decades ago and the ones that just happened yesterday. And there's this profound chain of events that happened in its own very specific way and at the very end of it all is you and us together and the fact that I get to build a life with you and we get to make it everything we've ever wanted you are everything I believe in and you're everything I love you are my pillar of creation <laughs> Anthony and Nicole, please take each other's hands. <laughs> and all of you who love each other, please take your hands as well. To reach out to someone and be acknowledged and to be loved is a human need. Taking the hand of one who loves you is a powerful symbol of that love, a powerful symbol of that unspoken bond. Nicole and Anthony, please take a good look at each other's hands so that you may see the gift that they are to you. These are the hands of your best friend, these hands that hold yours on your wedding day. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as together you build your future. These are the hands that when born and aged will still be reaching for yours. Now that you have declared your vows to one another, it is time to place your rings on each other's finger as symbols of your undying love for each other. Your wedding rings are the outward and visible signs of the inward and indelible bond which already unites the, your two hearts in love. Anthony, please place the ring on Nicole's finger and repeat after me. 
<laughs> Other side. So, Anthony, repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. To wear with love and joy. To wear with love and joy. As this ring has no end. As this ring has no end. So my love for you is endless. So my love for you is endless. <laughs> Ring to wear. I give you this ring to wear. With love and joy. With love and joy. As this ring has no end. As this ring has no end. My, so my love for you is endless. So my love for you is endless. May the wedding rings you have exchanged today remind you always that you are surrounded by enduring love. And now, by the power vested in me by the state of Indiana, it is my honor and delight to declare you husband and wife. You may seal this declaration with a kiss. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure and honor to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. McHugh. Jessica and Kevin.
Congratulations, guys. All right, at this time, we have... He had uh, Indian 
suicides at a young age and uh, I'm sharing a room with Kevin and dealing with all this harassment at night. He'd try to ease his mind and he'd write out to poisons all over his bedroom wall. <laughs> I had to find that before he went to bed. <laughs> there we are. Uh, but all kidding aside, he, he's extremely tough-minded um, and, and uh, strong young brother. Uh, having been through what he went through at a young age uh, in high school, he continued to strive uh, and stay focused on his plans to get to Notre Dame, which he did for absolutely free. It's a hell of a feat, uh, and he accomplished it after everything that happened to our dad. He'd be extremely proud of him. Just as mom is today. Stuck to us, thick and thin, good times and bad, and we know Pops is still here with us today. We love you both. Cheers. Um, one more second. <laughs> Besides being uh, Mr. Studious, Anthony was always quirky and hilarious. He still is today. Uh, these two have been super tight, close in age, growing up. Whole nine yards. They actually used to mess with me more than I wish back. <laughs> yeah, but growing up, uh, he's always been a great old, great brother to both of us, uh, and a great friend to all of his buddies. Uh, he's remained close with several of his great school friends, uh, several that are here tonight. Um, and after being in inbound and graduation, when he headed out east, uh, they all stayed close because that's who Anthony is. Uh, he keeps his friends close and his enemies in his rearview mirror, <laughs> running him over, and he kind of suck at riding. <laughs> and, and he would never hurt anybody. He doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He's always kind and cares about everybody's well-being. Family, branch, bro, whatever the case may be. Um, while he was growing out east on his own, um, he never lost touch with those that were close, especially his family, including uh, his sister-in-laws, Jane and Renata. He's been a great uncle to all our kids, Henry, Ruth, and George, um, and he's still a giant kid at heart, which we all love. Even though he's still that little kid, those tight little curls turned into some greasy <laughs> waves that run over a California girl's heart. <laughs> These two hit it off right away. Uh, first time she came into town uh, to meet everybody, I think we all knew something was special. Uh, Nicole, first time we met and hung out several times, Jan and I loved her personality um, and saw how much you cared for Anthony, no. which is huge. You're such a great person, you're the same kind-hearted characteristics he does, which is why you guys mesh so well. Your baking helps. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony told me you were sweet, but I didn't really get his pun. <laughs> Uh, you've been a huge part of our lives over the last several years. You're great aunt to the kids. They love you. You mean so much to Anthony and all of us. And that's everybody here in the room. I just wanted to uh, reminisce a little bit about the first time uh, our family met Nicole. And I mean like our intermediate family. We all went out to dinner and had a great dinner and everything was just awesome. And, she meshed so well with the family, and uh, from that point on, I've always considered you my sister, Nicole. Um, and uh, that uh, is why I feel that you and Anthony are just meant to be together. You guys are what one doesn't have, the other one does have. And I feel like that is what makes uh, love and happiness in my eyes. Um, you guys make each other a whole, and that's very important in a marriage. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, Anthony has always been a very loving and caring person, and to find that in a counterpart in the core is something super, super special. Um, and that's what's going to make this marriage last forever. Uh, uh, and, um, that is why you guys will always have love and happiness for the rest of your lives. I love the both of you guys, and um, I don't know what else to say. But, uh, everybody loves you, and uh, we all wish you the best. If everyone wants to raise their glass and a happy new couple, we love you guys. It's everything that holds love and happiness.
after following two brothers, I feel like this speech is really from Satan I am where I really do really care. I consider you our sisters. So many of you I've only just met, so you don't probably know that I spend my days working with senior citizens in Seattle, Washington. And this job has many challenges and perks, but I'm going to focus on the main perk. And it's the fact that people who've lived the right age of 104, which they do, I work with a lot of them, they give out extremely sentimental and sometimes pertinent life advice. Life advice that you can then use at one of your best friend's weddings. Because when I came to writing a speech for Nicole and Anthony's wedding, I was very overwhelmed. And, and was, I was overwhelmed with the responsibility of having to put to words anything that could possibly describe like, the love and I have for each other. And then I felt extra challenging because I only just met you on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, yeah, no, 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 yeah, it was great, it was great, it was great. And I mean, from the time that Nicole described you, from the first time she met in New York, I always felt like I'd known you. But it was a bit of that. <laughs> then one day, back in Seattle, when I was stressing over this task, I was reminded of the sweetheart social that I posted for the residents at my work this past Valentine's. And it was an event where the couples got to come out and show off their wedding photos, tell us how they first met, and dish out some premium relationship advice. And one woman, her name's Mary Margaret, which like, she is absolutely the cutest person you would ever have the privilege of meeting. She wears like teddy bear sweaters, and she's the girl. But um, she bestowed upon the group some very Pacific Northwest wisdom. She said, before you marry anyone, Go camping with them. Get them out of their comfort zone. Make sure they can handle you at your worst. Which can't be a We got camping on. Because it's not going to be a Hollywood romance. It's going to be real life. And real life comes with hardships. And Mary Margaret knows what she's talking about. And has a 65 year long marriage to prove it. And over the duration of Nicole and Nancy's relationship. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be stone cold today, no cheer. <laughs> Never happened. Um, over the duration of Nicole and Anthony's relationship, there were plenty of joyous occasions, but there have also been some major hardships and transitions. They have moved their lives from New York City to Indiana. They have unfortunately grieved the loss of family members together. They have navigated issues and challenges that go far beyond the camping and They have been able to do this with strength and grace, and they have been each other's safety net, emotional sounding board, and best friend. <laughs> Whenever I would hear news in Seattle that something major had come up in Nicole's life, I never once doubted that she was in it alone. Because I knew Anthony would always be by her side. You are always there to listen, problem solve, and my personal favorite, laugh the pain away. And Anthony for that, I, we, Nicole, Seattle family, and California. We really, we thank you for the love of her for being there for her. Make a party sit down. Crystal, sit down. I know that Nicole, with her relentless and optimistic outlook, glowing smile, wholehearted laugh, and emotional intelligence will always be there for you, Anthony. Which is something not everyone has. But once you've experienced Nicole's undying love, it's hard to imagine life without it. So I hope all of us out here tonight consider ourselves very lucky to know Nicole and to have some of her love. And Anthony, I know you probably consider yourself the luckiest man alive to have found her. You too. You two. <laughs> you two are a beautiful example of two hearts and minds that truly belong together. And I, I say I hope, but I know I'm not overstepping my bounds by speaking for everyone here tonight when I say we're looking forward to seeing you two all together. We're looking forward to seeing how you two navigate this crazy thing we call life together. 
we are looking forward to hearing the advice we'll be dishing out at your office and Park Social 65 years from now. So, here's to you two. Here's to growing old again. Cheers!
Henry, can you do the words? Which Henry? Right here! Oh man, make some room, Henry. You gotta do the room, man.